Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. Here's your news for November 29, 2019. We're starting off by looking at the commentators of pro wrestling, as it's been a strange few weeks for the announced teams. From Jim Cornette to Corey Graves, there's been plenty of scandal recently for what commentators have said, and fans can add Jim Ross to that list. During Wednesday's AEW Dynamite, Emi Sakura came out to the ring dressed like Freddie Mercury, leading Ross to say that the deceased singer never looked so, quote, oriental. Immediately, Ross tried to cover for his remark, and while some took offense online, others have defended the WWE Hall of Famer. It's unclear what steps AEW will take, but it looks like Ross's comments didn't receive the same backlash as Graves or Cornette, much to the relief of the Oklahoma native. More AEW news now as Nyla Rose has proven she's not messing around in her quest to become the dominant force in AEW's women's division. When Shanna was having an autograph signing before Dynamite this week, it wasn't long before the native beast appeared, flattening Shanna and ruining everyone's fun. It was a pretty surprising moment that fans definitely didn't see coming, as though they showed up for a meet and greet, they got some live action as well. We'll have to wait and see what AEW's response to this is, but it seems that another title match with Riho may be in the future of Nyla Rose. We're looking at WWE NXT next, and though the brand has gotten used to some big farewells over the years, this week was much different. For the first time in the brand's history, it was a referee's turn to get the goodbye, as it seems Jessica Carr's time on the gold brand has come to an end. Carr officiated the main event between Tommaso Ciampa and Finn Balor during the show, and after the match, the Blackheart announced that Carr is making the lateral move to SmackDown. As the first female referee in WWE in decades, Carr has been a trailblazer as part of the women's revolution, and we wish her the best of luck at her new home on Fox. Back to AEW now, and despite Scorpio Sky's best efforts on Dynamite, Chris Jericho remains the company's world champion. The inner circle leader is clearly having fun on top, and this week broadened his mind with some art, which just so happened to be of himself. The work in question is a self-portrait of Jericho shortly after he won the title at All Out, and only hours before he lost the gold at a Longhorn Steakhouse. Though his post about the art was an ad for the company that turns pictures into paintings, Jericho's commission is still epic, and would suit the wall of any wrestling fan who can't get enough of Le Champion. On Sunday, the WWE Network hosted its first edition of the Broken Skull Sessions as Stone Cold Steve Austin sat down with The Undertaker. During the show, the out-of-character dead man revealed that one of his earliest matches was against Bruiser Brody, and recalled irritating the legendary stiff worker and paying the price. He said, My first match is against Bruiser Brody. My skill level, I mean, I'm greener than shit, but I get in the ring and that stupid gene flips in the back of your head and I'm looking at him going, I'm bigger than he is. So ding ding ding, and we tie up, and as soon as we tie up, I'm pushing and he's like, okay, lighten up kid so I'm going to give him the push-off, and when I do, I kind of push off and I flick him in the chin a little bit, you know? We tie up again, boom, I grab an arm. So I'm standing there with a standing arm bar. I just grabbed it, right? I don't know how I got so stupid, really. So he's about to shoot me off and I yell, clothesline. Now I'm calling the match. Now I got no brains, off he comes, right? And man, I'm wound up, and that furry boot comes up and wham! My eyes roll back to the back of my head and I'm like, oh, wow, okay. At this point, Brody told the rookie Undertaker that they were, quote, going for a walk, and proceeded to throw him from the ring, placed him on a table, and smashed a metal and wooden chair over his back. Describing the feeling as like a gunshot going off, the dead man admitted that it was a painful lesson to learn, but was pleased to have learned it from the legendary Bruiser. Back to AEW now, and after this week's Dynamite returned to the Sears Center, it's obvious that the Chicago market has been flooded with pro wrestling. After all, WWE just hosted a four-day extravaganza in the city for Survivor Series, and the Second City fans may have had more than they could take. As you can see in the picture, Dynamite had the majority of their fans on the hard camera to give the illusion of a stacked arena when the truth was anything but that. Faking a full crowd isn't anything new in wrestling, but it may not be the best idea for AEW to keep returning to Chicago around Thanksgiving. But then again, the WWE isn't likely to flood the market every year either. 
More AEW news now, and after their Lights Out match at Full Gear, Kenny Omega and Jon Moxley are still pretty sore. The match, that saw both men use weapons rarely seen before in wrestling, even had some people saying AEW crossed a line, but one person who loved the fight was Moxley himself. While speaking to 101.1 WKQX, the lunatic revealed that he loved creating that awkward tension during his brutal match in Baltimore, saying, You don't get the reactions very much anymore. You get a lot of, oh, ah, ah. But it's a whole different thing when it's, oh, no, 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 ooh. That's so much more intense. That's, it's cool, man. Yeah, a totally different sauce. I knew there were going to be a lot of people that were going to be like, that's not their cup of tea. Some people are just grossed out. I've never been offended or had a problem with anything I've watched in wrestling. I've never went, ooh, I can't watch that. And I've seen some gross stuff. I've seen some horrifying stuff. I've seen some stuff where I'm like, ooh, God, even I'm grossed out by that, but that's cool. I wish I would have thought of it. So, if you don't have the stomach for that level of gratuity or whatever, then I'm not offended by it. We painted the painting we wanted to paint exactly as we intended, but not everybody's going to want to have that painting hanging in their living room. It might make some people uncomfortable. I was thrilled with the whole thing. Even WWE's Renee Young wasn't too thrilled about what her husband was doing on pay-per-view, but after Moxley described the backstage host as being overdramatic, the former world champion may be trading in the Ambrose Asylum for the doghouse for the time being. Fans will have to wait and see whether AEW puts on another huge hardcore match like this in the future, as the company is now issuing $10,000 fines to Jimmy Havoc for using his staple gun, so the company might not be ready for another unsanctioned thriller. While speaking out to Wrestling Inc., AEW president Tony Khan addressed the negative reaction to the Lights Out match and explained that the company saw the backlash coming, saying, I expected it and that's why we put it on pay-per-view. We would never do anything like this on TV. Our friends at TNT know what we're trying to do in putting hardcore matches in the main events of pay-per-views. There's going to be two wrestlers that want to settle it, so we're not going to sanction it. We're going to turn the lights off and turn a blind eye to it and not be liable for what occurs in the ring. I think it's a very logical thing and I'm not surprised that people are shocked. I think most people did love it. It got a huge amount of interest and it did exactly what we wanted it to do, which was start a conversation. To me, I absolutely loved it. It may be a very long time before we see AEW wrestlers pull those kind of stunts again, but given that this is All Elite Wrestling, a company built on unpredictability, anything is possible. Tony Khan clearly supported the idea of having another brutal match like the Lights Out match, but it seems that a second contest would only be called upon when necessary. Though Jon Moxley and Kenny Omega are thriving as part of AEW, one star who isn't too happy is Joey Janela. On Twitter this week, Janela said he wasn't showing up to this week's taping of Dynamite, claiming issues with the company's booking was ruining his 14-year career. At Game Changer Wrestling's event yesterday, Janela showed up in a big surprise to everyone and berated AEW on the mic before accepting John Moxley's open challenge. Explaining his negativity to the crowd, Janela said how Game Changer Wrestling was a place that actually lets him say what he wants. Telling the crowd that he's still having fun at AEW and ain't going nowhere, this gimmick could definitely have legs in the company, as the disgruntled star hating on the new promotion is bound to get a reaction from the loyal AEW crowd. And finally today, we're ending by looking at this week's NXT, which saw Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly defend their NXT Tag Team titles against Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. When the match went to a commercial break, Fish was pulled from the contest and replaced by Roderick Strong, and the announcer stated that due to Fish's injury, Strong could replace him in the championship match under the Freebird rule. While some saw this as just part of the story, Fish's injury is unfortunately real, as there's speculation that the Undisputed Era member may have suffered a concussion. The belief is that Fish got hurt after taking a gorilla press from Lee, and that the decision to replace him with Strong was made on the fly, which is why the NXT North American champion wrestled in his street clothes. People who saw Fish backstage said that he looked fine, so perhaps he might not have suffered a concussion after all, but whatever happened, it was enough for the decision to be made to replace him with Strong. Despite this setback, Strong and O'Reilly successfully defended the tag titles against Lee and Dijakovic, and we hope to give you an update on Fish's condition when the news is available. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, give us a hit of that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe to keep up to date with all our videos, and as always, thanks for watching.